On this episode of Nugget Project, it's currently 40 degrees in Melbourne and it's about a squillion degrees in this shed. So I think we're going to talk about cabin cooling. That's right, after a long delay, summer has finally hit Melbourne and it is very, very hot at the moment. I am sweating buckets. It sucks. So I thought today was a better day than never to talk about cabin cooling. So, for anybody that hasn't been in a race car, they're hot. Even a little race car like this. There's no insulation, there's no air con, there's no, nothing like that, and it just gets really hot. Even, I've got a very thin race suit, thanks to our friends at Lux Performance. Legends. Um, and even with that, in the car, even on a cold day, I'm still very hot. On a hot day, like a day like today, it'll be 60 odd degrees in that car. I'm not joking, it'll be so hot. And I have no ventilation. If you put your windows down, it only slows you down. We've only got 95 horsepower. You go winding your windows down, it's way too slow. So, our friends at Lux Performance sent me this. This is a NACA duct. NACA is the old, N-A-C-A is the old name for NASA. So it was a nautical and aerospace, I don't know, look it up, you look it up. I'm gonna do it. Anyway, that's what it stands for because they developed it. And what it does is, if you have a look there, it's nice and flat on the outside. And then this bit goes on the inside. As air runs over that shape, it actually sucks air in. It does like a Venturi effect. And it sucks air into the cabin and then cools us down. We get flowing air in the cabin, but because it's flat on the outside, we don't have that kind of drag effect of having windows open. It's only a small little area. Now, with the XLs, I would love to go slap a polycarbonate window in there and just mount that in there and that would just solve all our problems. That would be fantastic. Unfortunately, part of the rules are we can't run polycarbonate windows. What we are allowed to run is a polycarbonate insert in here. We have to keep the stock window, unfortunately, but we can put an insert in there and then run our NACA duct in the passenger window and then we run the ducting, yada, yada, yada. So, <clears throat> what I need is a sheet of polycarbonate. This is where our friend Brendan Jenner comes in. So Brendan hit me up and he goes, dude, I have this left over from doing my window. And I had this cardboard template, which I literally did this, I'm not kidding, like two years ago or something. I made this template up for the window at my dad's house and I've been carrying it around forever. And I laid it over a piece of polycarbonate that Brendan gave us and it fits. So this little off cup will actually work, which is amazing. Polycarbonate is not as easy to come by as you'd think. You know, all the stuff at Bunnings, that's all acrylic. Acrylic? Perspex, whatever. It's the stuff that fractures and breaks. This stuff is a lot stronger and doesn't splinter. So if you're in a crash, you don't get splinters of dangerous sharp owies in your face. Um, <clears throat> so we've got that, so we're gonna cut that to size. So I've already used my template. And all I did for this literally is just a piece of cardboard, fit it in there, trimmed it, trimmed it, made sure it all worked in size. And then we're like, yeah, cool, that's gonna work. Lay it over there and we just have to cut that out. So to cut this, we just use a fine tooth uh, jigsaw, apparently. I've never done it. I'm gonna test the piece first, make sure it works. Um, this polycarbonate usually runs three mil, which I think is the same thickness as the window. Um, and then the last piece of this puzzle is this guy. So I got this from Clark Rubber and it is, you can see that, it's got the, channels either side so basically we can put this on the window like so and then slot a polycarbonate sheet in there wind the window up it's all wedged in and it won't move how good's that so i just got that from clark rubber it was i don't know eight bucks or something once again bought this so long ago and it's just been carried around from house to house ripper let's get started let's cut this polycarbonate sheet to size and then we can cut a hole for the NACA duct and then we can do stuff inside. I've got some other bits for inside the car. So let's do this first. All right, so I got this from Bunnings. This is a very fine tooth jigsaw blade. So it is for polycarbonate and stuff like that. Guess that'll work. Let's give it a go. Pretty bloody good. Okay. 
Now we just need to do that for all of it. Did I mention it's hot? And uh, apparently polycarbonate shavings stick to your uh, sweaty skin. <laughs> Gross. All right, looks like that is cut. So there we go. So we'll test fit it in the window before we go taking any covers off it. That jigsaw is terrible by the way, like it's an old one. I think I nicked from my job when I was like 21. <laughs> and it's all bent and terrible. And anyway, let's pop this in the window, see if it fits. So, wind this window down. Let's see if it wants to behave going up in here. Every chance I might have cut it a bit too big too, because I was worried about cutting it too small. You get it. Okay, let's get it inside the seals. Uh huh. So, I think I've made it a bit too long on the end. Okay, so I'll trim a little bit off that end. We should be in business. Okay, I skipped ahead a bit of that stuff. You don't need to see it. Oh God, I'm soaked. And yes, I'm wearing pants because I don't like wearing shorts in a workshop because this sharp stuff. That's me. Um, cool. I think that's about as good as it's going to get, to be honest. It's still not fitting exactly how I'd like up here, but I think that's pretty damn close. So now we need to cut our rubber strip to size. And I have trimmed one edge of this already to fit the window, so that's that part. So maybe we'll half put it in there, figure out where it finishes and cut it to size, and then we can actually jam this thing in there, and that's how it's going to be. Ah. Place to stay in. Cool. All right, I'm happy with that. Put a knacker duct in it. So guys, I'm in two minds here. Usually you cut off the excess of these knacker ducts so it follows the shape of the duct, but I'm thinking maybe I just put the whole thing in because this extra bit will actually sort of strengthen that panel. I don't know, like I kind of like that extra rigidity. So I've got a bunch of screws to screw this in I think it might be a little more stable doing that. Hmm. I made an executive decision. I'm gonna trim it down. Every single picture I looked at online, they're all trimmed by one and it looked terrible. So we'll trim it down. You know what? Might as well make it look as nice as possible. Anyway, let's cut it. Okay, so trim down. I'm gonna try and figure out how to, because I gotta cut the inner, the inner part. So I need to cut that section, not that section. So I've kind of measured the outside. And I could probably measure that in and work it out. The easiest way would be to take the film off, let it be see-through, and then trace it from the inside. But then that makes it harder to cut without scratching it. Hmm. Ghetto as hell, but I think it's gonna work.
Okay, we have a hole, we have a duct. If the camera cuts out, it's because it's flashing up that it's too hot. It's actually coming up with overheating warnings, so that's, that's good. Um, yeah, so that, so now we just have to drill, drill some holes and screw it together. Once I've drilled the holes, we'll take off the cover, the protective sheet, and um, yeah, basically stick it in the window and that, that part done. So let's do that now. Okay, so I've got 10 of these nice little stainless dome head screws. So I've marked out 10 spots here and I'm just gonna drill straight through, except for the two at the back I can't reach. So we'll do them after. Hopefully they're not too wonky. Now, you can take this cover off. Here we go. Just like when you get a new phone or a new piece of electronics and you want to take the sheet off, it's the best part. If I can find the corner. Yes! Oh yeah. One, ah, ah, ah. There we go. Oh, look at that. Already put my greasy fingerprints all over it. <laughs> Sick. So good. All right, we'll clean up those edges. And uh, put it in the car. Bolt this thing in and do the last two holes. Ta-da! Sick. With my sweat all over it, gross. All right, sweet, now let's bolt this thing in. So what I'm gonna do real quick is just use the Dremel and just clean up some of those edges just to make it look a bit neater. It's worth it. Time to bolt our knacker duct in. Now I have cleaned both that surface and the inside surface because obviously once this is bolted in, that's all gonna be trapped in there, all the dirty stuff. These bolts are a bit long. I probably should have got some smaller ones, but what do you do? Now I think a couple of those holes are gonna be a bit out of line, so I might just have to run the drill through it real quick just to straighten everything up. And there we go, all bolted in. It's got my sticky fingerprints all over it, but I reckon that is pretty cool. So that is gonna draw some nice cold air into our cabin. Time for another beer. Yes. Lemon squash, sorry, it's lemon squash. Right, so that alone was, is gonna make a huge difference. That would cool the car down heaps. Um, you know, just drawing cold air into the cabin, circulating it, fantastic. Now, I did have a couple of people mention that you need two knacker ducts. You need one to draw air in and one to pull air out because obviously air coming in, it's gonna pressurize the cabin and no air is gonna come out. However, this car and every car does have ventilation in it. I'll show you the ventilation in this car. It's in the back. So in the back here, these are little rubber vents, two lots of them there, one there, and that is for that exact reason. Obviously, if you run the heater or the cooling in a normal car, the air's gotta go somewhere. So it goes out these vents here. Now, I personally believe that is gonna be enough ventilation to keep the air moving. If it's not, then what we can do is just do some little cutouts here in the polycarbonate, and that'll allow air to sort of come in, blow out this way, Etc. Etc. I think the stock ventilation in this will be fine. If I need to, I could probably pop those little plastic bits out and just make them holes, and that'll do the same thing. So, not worried about that. 
But what we are going to do is, I've got a couple of parts over here, bear with me. I bought a bunch of ducting, this is the same as the brake ducting, and I bought way too much of it because I'm an idiot. But I'm going to use this on that to channel air to the driver's side and just go down there. I also bought this on the recommendation of our friend Brent Peters from Lux Performance. This is a bilge pump fan. So on boats and stuff, when they pump out, I don't know, I don't know anything about boats or sailing or seamen or any of that sort of stuff. Um, it's something to do with boats. What it is, is a three inch inline fan that fits with this. So what I can do is I'm gonna wire this in somewhere along the line. So the air can still get past this, no problem. It's like, yeah, I don't know if you can kind of see through that. It's not overly blocked or anything. Um, so the air will still flow through that through the knacker duct. But what I can do is when I'm sitting on the dummy, dummy grid, I can flick a switch and actually draw cold air in through our knacker duct onto me, cool me down. And apparently these are amazing. Like they <clears throat> blow really hard for lack of a better term. Um, so we're going to mount that in there too. It's just 12 volts. So it's super duper easy. Just I'll run it to my little fuse box thing that we did last time. Run it through there to a switch, flick that on, cold air. So we've got the vent, we've got the cold air. I will probably need some sort of nozzle to blow on me, which I might 3D print. I don't know yet, but that's a problem for future Matt. Anyway, let's go in the car and have a look. Alrighty, so in the car, obviously a knuckle duct is going to come about here. And then we need to loop it around. Now, the problem I have is I'm not gonna be able to open the door, the passenger door, once that's kind of plumbed together, which is kind of annoying. I don't really know what to do about that. Um, yeah. I was thinking about some sort of quick release system, but it's all stuff that's gonna be heavy and time consuming, which I'm not really into at the moment. Um, I think we're just gonna basically do it and lock the door and just deal with the driver's side from here on in until I can come up with a better solution. So anyway, where is our hose? So good stuff about this. It's not that heavy. It keeps shape when you bend it because it's got wire in it. So you're not crushing it, which is great. This is a 76 mil or three inch, if you will, if you're old school. Um, so I think we'll connect it up. I'd like to run it. Yeah. On the roof. Okay. This is really hard to film. But I'll show you kind of what my, I've come up with. So I've secured the piping up to the uh, roll cage and kind of kept it firm there. And it's, it's on there. But if I open the door, it just kind of falls out. And if I close the door, I can then wedge it back on and it just stays there by the force of where it's attached to the roll cage. Is it elegant? Not really, but I can't see that falling off. I think that's pretty good. So maybe I did need this much hose. <laughs> so I've kind of put it around the back of the cage, just using much cable ties. It's not the prettiest thing in the world but I don't really know how else to do it. And then, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna put the blower maybe up on the roof here somewhere. So where's my blower? It's a blower here. So kind of need to put it in line, probably up on the roof. So we'll connect it up and then route the piping somewhere around the wing mirror or something. I don't know. And then try and aim it at myself. So I might have to just get it there and then 3D print something like a, a U-turn with a nozzle to point at me. Might be the best way to go. I think we just need to get this pipe kind of laid in here. Sorry, I can't film this like, I don't even know how to get the camera in here. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'll bring the camera in and show you guys once I'm done. I think I'm just gonna cut here, get this in, and then I'll just show you the result. Okay, gonna be a bit of shaky cam here, but I'm gonna try and show you what I've done. Oh my God, I'm squashing the driver's seat, don't mind me. So, knacker duct. 
Yes, the piping is a bit all over the place, but it seems to be the neatest way I can do it. And then that goes to the blower, the blower's attached there. I've just got to wire that down into the dash. And then that comes up to here. So this bit here, what I want to do is 3D print basically a tube with a vent. And so I can make that vent point down towards me, the driver. So I can either just make it a tube with a vent or I can split it off into separate actual nozzles that point down towards the driver, something like that. So that's what I want to do. I'm going to get on CAD tonight and try and design something up like that. But yeah, that's basically it. So it looks a bit <laughs> all over the place, but either way, you kind of need to loop the pipe around back to the drive. I mean, you could loop it around and then have it sort of blowing these holes or through here or something. But I kind of want the air on the front of me, not the back. I I've seen it on cars and I've spoken to drivers who have had it on the back and they're like, yeah, it's okay. But I think I'd like the air to be sort of in front. So this way it's gonna blow down. I mean, my head's here, so I can blow it down all over my my face, like I can pop my visor up and it'll cool my face down. I think this is the way I want to do it. Plus this way, I should be able to still get my passenger seat in. Like I know a lot of these races don't care about passenger seats. I do, I built this car to enjoy with my friends. And so it'd be nice to get a passenger seat in and hopefully their head doesn't hit that blower. Um, yeah, lots of cable ties, pretty ugly, but uh, I think it works guys. So now let's wire in that switch and we'll test this fan. <coughs> Okay, so with the magic of editing, I have wired in our fan. So I basically ran the wires down the cage to my fuse box, um, earthed it off, and then ran a cable over to a switch here, because this switch is very easy to reach. This is where my ignition switches are. Um, and also I'd kind of finished off my control panel here. Um, but I haven't tested it yet. So here we go. Ignition on. And if I flick this switch. Oh my Lord. Oh, holy cow. Yes. Oh, that is, it's obnoxiously loud, but it's also very good. Holy crap. Okay, so it works. Uh, what now? Well, we're not gonna do it in this video, but I think what I like to do is just make that piece I said here. So we'll basically, yeah, do, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna have a play with there's space here, I could probably put some vents down. I don't know, because there's actually a bit of room just, just here above my head. I could probably do a tube and then do some vents down with some like tubes poking out here, because like I've got the window banner there. I basically, it's not gonna block my vision at all. Maybe I'll do that. I could do some little tubes that I can point or something. Let me have a play with that. But this is basically it. So it's not the craziest, prettiest thing. But then again, you look inside like V8 supercars and like high-end race cars, and it's all the same. They're all like this, you know? It's all just, um, yeah, ducting, kind of just shoved in anywhere. But it kind of works. I shut the door, wedge it on, and just because that's kind of got a bit of tension there, it doesn't move, so that's cool. So that's an easy thing. I can open that door without having to like unstrap or unclamp anything, so that's sweet. Um, I think this is a pretty cool solution. It should keep me cool and we should still get some decent airflow through there, even through that fan. Um, but you know what? Like if I'm out on track and I'm really hot, I can just flick that switch and just draw in some cold air, which would be fantastic. So yeah, I think that's pretty rad. Good stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching gang. Um, once again, we, we're not far off Bathurst now. Um, we've done some major things here with our fuel pressure regulator and Getting this uh, window in was a couple of the big things and also delivery finished is, is fantastic. So from here, we still need to um, get the exhaust made by mate Rob. We still need to take it over to our friend Adam Macro and get him to um, corner weight and set up the suspension properly because I'm just i not very good at that stuff. Um, and the rest is lots of little things. Like I want to kind of paint the floor, got lots of little bits to neaten up wiring wise and hoses. Um, not a lot, just little things that I won't film, but there's there's plenty more to do. And we've got our tires off being buffed and fitted to our new rims, very exciting. So we'll talk about that. Um, but in the meantime, I think we're done for today. So thanks for watching guys. We will see you in the next episode. Cheers.